Hello and welcome back to the forest, my sons. I am Halcyon and today I shall teach you how to fight like real men, so that you may survive even on the hardest difficulty. No, not that one, that's for casuals. I meant this one. Compared to hard mode, this custom difficulty is pretty much the same, except it has longer seasons, fewer animals, and the effectiveness of food, water, and medicine is sliced in half. As such, you will need to be at the top of your game in order to emerge victorious from an encounter with the circus rejects who inhabit this island. Today we'll cover several subjects. If you want to access a specific section and skip the rest, that's what timestamps and chapters are for. First off, there's no peace to be had with the tribals. That doesn't necessarily mean every encounter has to be lethal for either party. You can sometimes live and let live, but if you are hoping to hold hands with the locals and sing Kumbaya, that shit doesn't fly on this island, but then again, neither does anything else. If you truly wish to be as peaceful as you possibly can, you could try putting your weapons away, ignoring the natives and getting out of their way if they don't attack your base or obstruct an important objective. Additionally, some of them are sometimes compelled by the power of Christ, which you can find in this cave. I did notice that a few of them have a weird fascination with the cross, either painting it on themselves or using it in their art exhibits. But even more effective than divine intervention is the 3D printed red mask that scares some tribes and makes others ignore you for some time. I once used this thing to strut through a fully populated camp and steal their precious ropes, which probably qualifies as the biggest heist anyone's ever pulled off on this island. If none of that works, perhaps showing them a friendly face can get them to back off for a while, but sooner or later, one of them will do something that violates your NAP, whether preventing important archaeological research, attacking your employees, or vandalizing company property, and when that time comes, you'll be thankful you've learned what I'm about to teach you, such as the fact that baiting cannibals to jump in the lake is technically not murder. It's not your fault they can't swim. Now let us begin by discussing your arsenal. First, there's the knife, which is solely used to sharpen sticks and get you out of a bind. Similarly, the only purpose of the tactical hatchet is to keep you alive until you collect the modern axe, which will carry you through most of the game, both in terms of head and tree chopping capabilities. Since you're in the vicinity, you might as well grab the flashlight and GPS locator off of this dead guy here, along with everything else you can find, such as the booze and the rope. You can combine the latter with a couple of sticks and some duct tape to make yourself a primitive bow, which will be your primary way of exercising your Second Amendment rights for the majority of your time here. The bow needs arrows, however, but those are easy to manufacture so long as you have sticks, small stones and feathers, which you can get by punching birds out of the sky or by throwing a log at them when they land. Either that or you can make them at the 3D printer. The arrows, not the feathers. If you still have materials, you should craft yourself an improvised spear, and if you don't mind traveling a little, you may also get your hands on a stun baton, which can be found at these coordinates. If you landed in the forest, instead of the beach or the mountains, it's a stone's throw away from the crash site. Literally. Optionally, if you enjoy long walks to the beach and are not afraid of sharks, you can try to swim to this life raft in the middle of the ocean and get yourself a pistol, but since you most likely have no ammunition this early on, perhaps it's better to put it off until later, after you've found the wetsuit which allows you to outrun the hostile fish. But even without ammo, the handgun can still be useful in the right hands. If you've tamed the friendly neighborhood cryptid and placed the aforementioned GPS locator on her, you can hand her the gun and she will protect you from danger, just don't expect her to share her bullets or tell you where she found them. Don't rely on Ginny though, you're here to learn how to fight like a man, not hide behind your lady's skirt. 
These are not the only tools of destruction available to you, but they're the only ones you can obtain without violence. And once you learn how to fight with these basic weapons, you've pretty much learned how to fight with all of them. For now, we'll ignore the pistol and instead focus on the first four, which will be your bread and butter throughout most of the game, but that's only if you're on PC and have personalized your hotkeys. If you're on console, you may only quick slot two weapons onto your tack pack. I've explained how to do that in my starter guide at these timestamps. I don't feel like needlessly extending the length of this video by explaining the process all over again. Now that you've got a basic arsenal, it's time to fight, but uh, can't do that on an empty stomach. Make sure you're well fed and hydrated and if you didn't get a full night's rest, pop a can of monster energy to get your vitality to at least 75%. You never know when you run into conflict, so you need to be ready for it at all times or else you'll end up like this. Before we start talking about combat techniques, however, there's one last thing we have to mention. Weapons are governed by three stats. Speed, which is self-explanatory, damage, which is self-explanatory and also the most important one, and defense. In case you didn't know, blocking doesn't make you invulnerable to attacks. You still take a small amount of damage, but the higher your defense, the less it hurts to get hit. Blocking is the first combat technique if you didn't realize. In theory, it's simple. Hold right click, or whatever buttons you console guys use on your silly little controllers, and you prevent taking a whole lot of punch to the face. In practice, that's not all you have to do, because you can only block strikes coming directly from the front. If you get attacked from the side, or god forbid, from behind, you're literally and figuratively F in the A. To prevent that from happening, I have a simple rule that I suggest you follow. AKM. Always keep moving. I once fought a large pack of monkeys and when it was all done, I decided to rest by the fire for just a minute. Enjoy the view. Nope. Ten seconds later, I was jumped from behind. If you want to survive an encounter with a group of hostiles, hold your guard raised and AKM, keeping a lookout for all of their locations. If one of them is closer to you and the rest aren't, you can go for a quick attack, but then it's best to back away into a defensive position. And always keep your distance, because if you're too close to an enemy, he'll simply ignore the axe you're holding to his face and go through your block. Also, be mindful of your surroundings so that you don't get backed up into a wall by two mutants and then mauled to death because your stamina couldn't keep up with their relentless swings. Finally, if you get caught in a combo with your guard down, you won't be able to block your opponent in the middle of his swipes, which will probably result in you becoming shredded roast. If you're feeling particularly brave, you can try to parry an incoming strike. This is a high-risk, high-reward move that when performed successfully, it staggers an opponent for a couple of seconds, giving you the opportunity to charge up a heavy or do whatever else you want. To properly execute a parry, you must quickly tap the block button instead of holding it at the exact moment when your enemy begins his attack. Now, these boys have a varied set of moves. Some can be parried like I said, others have to be delayed a little bit, and a few have to be executed with absolute precision, but if you want to hear that satisfying bonk, you'll have to learn the timing yourself. All I can do is give you the knowledge, the skill is yours to develop. After 10 hours of intensive testing, I concluded that only the regular cannibals who wield weapons can be staggered after a parry. Brawlers, juggernauts and mutants don't give a rat's ass about your little flick of the wrist. As far as I could see, trying to parry those guys is only marginally better than blocking, as it completely negates incoming damage and prevents you from being knocked down by certain attacks, such as the juggernaut's kick. But for me personally, the risk greatly outweighs the potential reward. So I don't bother parrying anything other than regular tribals. Your final defensive move is the dodge. No, this is not the ballet move you see in The Witcher or Dark Souls. It's actually a lot simpler and it ties into the principles discussed earlier. AKM and KYD. 
to dodge, you simply sprint away from your enemy, and in case you didn't know, you may also sprint backwards or sideways, albeit at a slower pace. But if I see a big boy charging at me like a stampeding bull, I simply turn around and just run away at full speed, jumping on the nearest rock I see to buy myself a moment. Unlike the aforementioned games, in this one there's no invulnerability frames, there's only staying the hell away from the enemy's swings and for that, you don't need perfect timing, you just need proper spacing. Be careful with your stamina though, and if you're not in tip-top shape like I advised you to be, don't exert yourself too much. Running for too long or swinging your axe too many times in quick succession will tire you out and you may not be able to move out of the way of a moving freight train of a club swing or block an incoming strike. My advice is to take it slow and steady. Just walk around and conserve your stamina for dodging, blocking or executing precise strikes. This should be easy though, because your character is built like a triathlete. It takes him an entire minute at full sprint to get completely exhausted and in 10 seconds he's back to 100%. But my favorite thing about this mechanic is that you can use it to dodge to the other side of the island whenever you see something that looks like it came out of Freddy Krueger's nightmares. And now that you know how to stay alive in a fight, let's learn how to make your enemies not so alive. As they say, the best defense is a good offense, but there's a catch. If your offensive sucks, you're f uh, finished. But before we discuss aggressive combat techniques, we need to start with the basics. You've got light strikes, which can be chained into a combo, and you've got the heavy attack, which deals enormous damage, but is usually the final argument in any discussion as it leaves you open to retaliation. This only applies to axes and the crafted club. The stun baton is a bit different, as its light attacks deal very little damage, but its heavy is much faster to execute and it has the unique effect of making an enemy stop whatever activity he's currently engaged in and attempt to do the worm. While he's practicing his dance moves, you can give him a nice chiropractic massage with the axe. What you've just done is called a weapon combo, where you combine two weapons to make short work of an enemy. Another weapon combo I like using every once in a while is to throw a spear towards a charging foe and if he gets staggered or knocked down, make him listen to my final argument. But if you learn just one thing from this guide, let it be the rushing charge which is the most important offensive technique that completely changed the game for me when I started implementing it. All it took was a simple adjustment, but to illustrate how big a difference it makes, let me tell you how I used to fight, because this is probably not too different from how you used to fight. See this monkey? In my first few hours, I used to strike at it and it would dodge backwards like the puto bastard he is. Then it would throw a rock or leap at me and get my health low, which drove me into a panic. In my desperation to finish the fight, I'd rush towards him and try to land a hit, but before my swing even began, he'd already slapped my knees off. But how, hell? How are we supposed to catch these little pendejos when they dodge away after every swing? The solution I propose is simple. Instead of running and then attacking, try attacking and then running. Charge forth and start your attack before you make contact, so that when the axe finishes swinging, it does so in the face of your target. Then, as the monkey flinches in pain, you strike a few more times and put him out of his misery. Make sure you don't run out of breath while the monkey is still alive, as it can regain its footing and retaliate or make an escape. And you can perform this charge attack against almost anyone. Not against anything though. You try pulling this off against a maw and it'll give you a nice taste of your own teeth. Against those things, you stay on the defensive. Won't tell you how to fight them now though. A bit later, pinky promise. If you promise to give me a thumbs up in return. With that said, use this technique with caution. 
Don't just bum rush your enemies and expect to win because some of them will block or dodge your attacks and then punish you for your sense of overconfidence. The main purpose of the charge is to close the gap between you and your opponent after he's finished his combo. Dodge or block an incoming attack, then charge if the enemy is too far away and if you can land one or more strikes afterwards, good. If not, raise your guard and back off. But if he staggers around like this or gets knocked to the ground, uh, you could let him live, but I suggest you go for the kill. Another variation of this attack is to charge up a heavy before you make contact, but as you can expect, this one is a little riskier. And if that wasn't enough, you may also use your superior mobility to execute an Omae wa mo shinderu on your enemies. Some attacks, such as the Juggernaut's kick or the Cannibal's leap attack, leave them open for a second which is enough time for you to sprint behind them and start chopping that meat. But don't overstay your welcome because they can turn around and slap your head off. And while the axe is the most devastating weapon for this move, you can perform the Russian charge with the others as well. The spear can poke and prod the enemies from a relatively safe distance, and the stun baton's special attack also has decent reach, and can be prepped before you make contact. The final application of your superhuman speed is to simply strafe around your opponents like an annoying mosquito and hit them from all sides, which works especially well against monkeys and the faceless. Now for the next combat technique, I don't know whether it qualifies as a defensive or offensive move, but you can bait an enemy to attack. To do so, simply raise your guard and push towards him, then sprint backwards to get out of the way of his swings. When you think he's done, punish with a regular attack or a charge if he's out of arm's reach. And with this, we're almost done talking about melee techniques, but before we bring this subject to an end, there's a few more things left to mention. The axe excels at dismemberment, so try aiming for the head or the limbs. The amount of hit points a juggernaut has is irrelevant when he's bleeding out from missing an arm. You may also swing your weapons around like a maniac because it doesn't matter where you look when you begin your attack. It only matters where you face at the moment of impact. Even so, you should still try to face your opponent at all times to see whether he's blocking, dodging or preparing to tear your face off. Finally, I've sometimes had success by crouching and taking a swing at the enemy's legs, but I wouldn't recommend you make this move a regular part of your dance routine. Oh, and I almost forgot, melee combat gets easier as your strength level increases, so if you're feeling weak, spend some time partaking in manly activities, such as wood chopping or construction before you head into battle. Everything we've discussed thus far are instances of knowing yourself, but that is only half the battle. The other half is knowing your foes. The most common type of enemy encountered on the surface is the classic cannibal. Whether he's a painted lad, a clothed man, or... The ever-brilliant Goldmask. They all have the same moves. Some of those can be sidestepped, Others can be parried, most can be blocked. But the cannibal is not mindlessly aggressive. If he needs to, he'll also block your attacks and then retaliate, or dodge backwards and then retaliate, or just run off and climb a tree. And I say him because most of the native women don't fight. I mean, they do if you invade their personal space, and if you're caught into their savage strikes, you'll probably be turned into mincemeat, but unless they're actively pursuing me, I tend to avoid harming the ladies and just let them run off. Virginia is not as merciful. But back to the topic at hand, when you fight one of these guys, or several, make sure you stay on the defensive and only punish when they give you an opening. And if you have the courage, you can try to crush through their blocks with a heavy, unless they change their mind and decide to slap you in the middle of your attack. Then there's their pets, the monkeys. Whether harassing you with pebbles from a safe distance or leaping at you, they're annoying as hell, but they can be sidestepped with ease and blocked. 
Once you've learned their behavior, however, they're trivial to deal with. The way I do it is keep my guard raised and sprint towards them to bait them into attacking. Soon as they slap, they predictably dodge backwards. So I perform a rushing charge and then keep swinging my axe until they drop. Next there's the fat boys, slow but tough, avoid their strikes and punish their openings. Their leap attacks are easy to dodge and leave them vulnerable for long enough to wind up a heavy. Finally there's the juggernauts, the apex males of their tribes. If one of these guys lands even a single hit on you, they've secured their next meal. Technically, one of their hits only takes away half of your health, but they are guaranteed to knock you down, which means they'll hit you a second time, unless you get really lucky. Honestly, I don't recommend you give these guys a fair fight. Even if you block their strikes, they still hurt like hell, and if you get kicked, it's game over. If you insist on fighting them in melee, AKM, KYD, and if you spot an opening, perform a quick charge attack and then back off. But what I recommend instead is that you grab your bow and aim for the head. Not even a carbon fiber arrow is strong enough to insta-kill them, but even the stone arrow can knock them to the ground, which gives you time to switch to the axe and rearrange their ribs. Do this several times and even the mightiest will fall before you. You may also perform this weapon combo against gaping maws you encounter out in the open, but you have to aim for their legs instead. Unfortunately, most mutants reside inside dark caverns and unlike Virginia, you don't have an extra hand to hold the flashlight while you're using the bow. Even so, you can still get them to bend the knee, if you hit their legs with your axe or your pointy stick, but fighting these guys in melee isn't exactly easy, at least not until you understand how they behave. You see, mutants have a very predictable moveset and after they finish one of their attacks, you're free to repost. To easily defeat one of these guys, all you have to do is block, keep your distance and bait them into attacking. When you spot a move that you can punish, such as the triple swipe, wait for them to finish, then strike back and raise your guard once more. Do this several times and eventually they'll fall. And you can apply the same principle against all mutants. Once you get used to their attack patterns, you'll know when to retaliate and running through caves will become a breeze, especially when they're nice enough to hit each other for you. The long boys are a bit more difficult to fight in melee because they them's attacks knock you down even through your block. But if you apply the same principles you've learned today, even they will be easy to dispatch. I've noticed that every time I swing my axe, the abomination instantly dodges backwards and launches into a counterattack, so I bait it into doing this move and then combine the dodge and the rushing charge to uh, reverse uno card the creature as soon as it's done. Also, there's times when they raise their communal butt up into the air and start violently twerking for a couple of seconds, which gives you the opportunity to circle around to their side and land a hit. You know what to do afterwards, don't you? Told you a hundred times. Raise your guard. Then there's the wretched spawn. These babies love flinging themselves at their victims with enough force to land behind them, therefore it's pointless to dodge backwards. Sidestepping and blocking is your best bet and then finishing them off with a heavy attack if your axe isn't strong enough to kill them with a light. Finally, there's the Faceless who make up the bulk of the cave inhabitants. These guys hit hard but they die easily and they're blind which only allows them to swipe aimlessly at your last known location. So make some noise to bait them into attacking, then sneak away and when they stop to contemplate their life choices, rush towards them and swing your axe until they drop. When they fall, you can even skin them and obtain a piece of creepy armor which leads me to my next subject, prevention and cure. To prevent taking damage, equip whatever pieces of armor you have. Could be the one I just mentioned, could be something that's purely aesthetic, or it could be the bone armor. I found out that burning one cannibal gives you enough bones to craft 
three pieces of armor, as long as you have the rope and duct tape needed in its recipe. Rope is most commonly found scattered around tribal camps, sometimes hidden inside wooden crates that you have to lockpick, so you might actually find yourself to be the aggressor as you raid these poor cannibals. And if being a raider sounds like fun, you can actually find more encampments by uh, equipping a severed head and scaring the locals with it. As they run away in terror, you can follow them back to their homes and then do what you gotta do. If they object to me stealing their rope, I show them the axe, build a nice fire to keep them warm, and with their help, craft my bone mail on the spot. The bones on the outside protect the bones on the inside. Unfortunately, armor is a consumable item which works exactly the same way it does in the other game where you fight demons. You equip it, you get some extra hit points and when it takes damage it breaks, but as long as you have it on, your health bar stays full. I tend not to rely on it though, preferring instead to raw dog the combat encounters, but if my skill falters for a moment and I get injured, I simply pop some pills. However, if you take any damage during the healing process, it's instantly interrupted even if you block and you will have wasted precious meds. To prevent that, I simply equip a piece of armor after consuming the medicine so that my health takes no damage through the block and it can safely recover. Medicine is the most straightforward way to regenerate, but on the badass difficulty, one bottle of pills isn't enough to make a full recovery, and they're rare, so you might want to look into homeopathic alternatives. Aloe is the mother of all healing. Combine it with yarrow and you make the health mix, which restores a quarter of your total health, or half if you're on the pussy difficulty, and combined with horsetail and fireweed, it's turned into better health mix, which heals twice as much. To help you make these herbal remedies for yourself, I will briefly show you where I find the aforementioned plants and if you get seeds, put those into planters and create your own home pharmacy. I've noticed that there's a higher chance to get seeds if you just destroy the plants with your axe instead of picking them up, but only do so when you have a full stack of them in your inventory. And if you're out of medicine or ointments, consuming cooked food can restore a bit of your health, but not very effectively if you're on the nightmare difficulty. And now would be a good time to mention that cannibals sometimes wear armor as well, and it works in pretty much the same way your bone mail does. As long as they have it on, they won't even flinch, unless you aim for whatever body part is not covered by armor, or you break it, either with melee strikes or precise arrow shots. But you know what we haven't talked about? Ranged combat. That's because it's straightforward. Point and shoot. If you also incorporate a bit of cardio into your routine, you'll be unstoppable. But this place is not the US of A, which means that ammunition is rather scarce, so you might want to conserve your 9 millers and buckshot for something other than common tribals. So let's briefly talk about the purpose of each weapon. I was going to start off by saying that the pistol can be wielded with one hand, which leaves the other hand free to hold a flashlight, but after playing around for a little bit, I realized that all ranged weapons, with the exception of the bow, can be wielded with a single hand. You are going to need both hands to reload, so if you're inside a dark cave, you might not want to do that in the middle of a fight. Anyway, let's start with the crossbow, actually. Accurate, silent, deadly. Only downsides are that it's slow to reload and the bolts aren't exactly easy to find, which is why I make it a priority to recover my spent ammo ASAP. This weapon is most useful during cave expeditions. Whenever I detect hostile life signs, I sneak around and shoot them in the head, one by one. And since I can aim with one hand while the other lights the way, it's obviously superior compared to the bow in this regard. You could mount a laser sight or flashlight attachment to the crossbow, but I find it obstructs my vision, so I tend to just leave it unmodded. You may also put those attachments on the pistol or the shotgun, but only after you've found the appropriate rail. 
Speaking of firearms, let's begin with the pistol. It's quick, it's accurate and the ammunition is not that rare. I've never used it on the surface but inside a cave. It's my panic button whenever I find myself in a sticky situation because I'm able to mount a silencer on it and quietly take care of an immediate problem without alerting others to my presence. Then there's the shotgun, which is probably the most devastating weapon on the island. The ammo for this weapon is rather scarce, but if you wish to skip a 5 minute fight with a long boy, 3 doses of buckshot instantly tell him to shut up. And if you have an abundance of slugs, know that they deal less damage than the buckshot, so you shouldn't waste those on the scary monsters, but if your base is suddenly attacked by cannibals, you can use that ammo type to enforce your no trespassing legislation. Honestly, I just give Ginny the guns. She has stashed away an infinite supply of ammo and can use both firearms at the same time. Well, I either fight in melee or use the bow. Its stone arrows don't travel very far, but even one headshot is enough to turn a cannibal into a meal for his buddies. And if you use 3D printed or carbon fiber arrows instead, almost as deadly as a crossbow bolt. Before I got good at melee combat, the bow helped me survive most combat encounters. But the most powerful weapon of all, the one, the only, the slayer of giants. Give it up for the mighty pebble. Monkeys aren't the only ones able to throw stones, you can do it too. And if you hit a regular cannibal in the head, which should be easy since you see the trajectory of the projectile, he gets knocked down and you can finish him off with the axe. You can also find a slingshot on these three sentinels, but I honestly haven't used it that much. Finally, there's molotovs, grenades and bombs. Do I even need to teach you how to use those? Light them up, throw them at the enemy and enjoy the fireworks, just don't get caught in the blast radius. Just be informed that one explosion is often not enough to instantly kill a cave mutant, but everything else is just instantly reduced to rubble. And I guess that's all of them. I mean, there's other weapons on the island. I might have seen a sword, a revolver and a compound bow, but those are just improved versions of the weapons we've talked about till now. So to recap everything I've said thus far. Use firearms to skip the fights. Use the bow and the crossbow to fight from a distance. And if you have the cojones, you can try your hand at melee combat. If you do, raise your guard, stay on the move, and bait your enemy into attacking. When he opens up to you, punish with a charge attack or a quick strike, then back off. Parry, if you're able to. Use heavies when the opportunity arises and don't be afraid to switch things up and perform weapon combos, either with a stun baton, bow or the spear. And a couple more tips for the videos over. Try not to fight if the visibility is low, but if you're forced to, make sure you improve the conditions for combat. If it's late at night, use a torch and if there's too much shrubbery around, clear it out so that the monkeys don't have a place to hide. Ideally, you're home when night comes and the place is well lit up. And when the enemies come attacking your base, don't strike at them with the axe if they're hugging your walls. You'll deal more damage to your own structures than the tribals ever could on their own. Unless you turn this option off, but where's the fun in that? But I think that was all I could teach you. Anyway, if you do everything you've learned today and you do it well, I promise, you'll build a skull collection to rival my own. Now all the developers have to do is add a skull throne. I know I'm not the only one who has that idea. And before I go, I have to give a huge shout out to Bob, who gave me a hand in practicing these combat techniques and making sure they work. As a token of gratitude, I've given him a permanent place under my roof. But I believe we're done. There's probably more to be said on the subject of combat, but this was all I had for the time being, so let's not drag this out any longer and say our farewells. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next time. Goodbye for now.